In the weeks leading up to the June primary, we are talking on 207 with all of the candidates, Republican and Democratic, running for governor and Congress who are on the primary ballot. With us tonight, Democratic candidate for governor, Diane Russell. Ms. Russell represented Portland for four terms in the main House of Representatives. Most recently, she worked for an organization called Women's Action for New Directions, which works on peace and security issues. Thanks for coming in. Good to have you here. Thanks for having me. In most elections past, we've always asked candidates about, all right, what would you do to try to help create more jobs in Maine? This year, things have really turned, and in much of the state, the problem is not a shortage of jobs, but a shortage of workers to fill those jobs. Absolutely. As governor, how would you deal with that problem? So one of the things that we need to deal with is um, student loan debt. We need to make sure that our students are able to get into two-year and four-year schools to get the skills gap met matched. So what we're hearing from uh, business owners is that they have all these jobs, but they can't find a skilled workforce to meet that up, uh, to be able to work for them. So we need to make sure that we are getting students who have left college and have debt, but they haven't necessarily graduated. We need to find a way to help get them back to college. We also need to make sure that we are addressing the student loan debt that people are having because it's making them not want to go to college in the first place. So I think the first thing that we have to do is address student loan debt. The flip side of that question is that there are unquestionably still parts of Maine where the economy is not what it needs to be, particularly the rural parts mm -hmm. of western, northern, eastern Maine. How do you deal with those, considering it's a problem that has stumped every governor who's tried to attack it for at least 40 years now? Every governor's candidate for the last four decades has come in and said, this is my solution to fixing everything. And the fact of the matter is, it's multi-pronged. We have to deal with education. We have some of the lowest educational attainment in the, um, in the region. We need to make sure that we are getting people into college, that we are educating them. And college also is a two-year degree, right? That's not just a, a four-year degree, it's a two-year degree. We also need to make sure that we are um, building economies, uh, building um, investments in places that make sense, in, in sectors of the economy. Like clean energy has a real return on investment. When you look at weatherization, those are jobs that are local and can be done in rural parts All right, of the state. Let me follow up though, because if you tell people from Millinocket and Lincoln and Rumford and Machias to go get a college degree and they return to their towns, their hometowns, there aren't jobs for them. That is part of the problem. And so we have a lot of jobs here in southern Maine, but you just said Rumford, my home area is Bryant Pond. I totally get that. It's one of the reasons I led the fight to legalize marijuana because we have grow facilities, all we can have them all across the, co uh, the state. When you look at uh, the greater Portland area, all the real estate market has been eaten up, all the warehouses, but there are plenty of places all across the state where we could grow uh, marijuana and build jobs there, and that's actually happening right now. But we also need to be thinking about investing in healthcare, right? We need to be uh, growing up our healthcare economy. It's one of the largest uh, sectors in the state. We need to be investing in uh, single-payer health care so that we can have more people who are actually seeking out health care and getting access to it. And when you do those types of things, we can build economies locally. But if we don't actually raise the wages for employees, right, if we don't actually provide economic security, they're not going to spend money in the market. Here's the thing. We all do better when we all do better. It's why we need a new deal. I want to invest in a state uh, public bank. We're, we're Sorry, we're gonna stop that for the <laughs> if we may. Okay, you have never run a large organization nor a, even a medium-sized organization. Mm -hmm. So, what makes you qualified to run something as sprawling as state government? Because I ran a convenience store. I say that facetiously. The fact of the matter is, we have we are always looking for that perfect person to lead the state, and that person almost always comes from money. They come from um, a corporate background. And I think what we need is a working class person who actually understands what it's like from the ground up to live in the rural parts of the state, to live in a working class environment. And that's the kind of voice I want to bring to the table. We need a state public bank. We need a public option retirement system to make sure that we can supplement Social Security. Big ideas do not always come from rich people. All right, we're talking about more funding here, but which taxes would you actually raise to find that funding? Great question. So you guys have been working really hard to raise money for the hunger issue in this state, and I want to commend you for that. Um, but we have a plan that we rolled out yesterday that would take the money, the $10 million that is currently in offshore bank accounts being outsourced and hidden, cheating the corporations that are cheating the system, and we're going to invest it in our farmers. And in order to close the hunger gap between what the charities in the state already do, it's $7 million. 
that's what it's going to cost to do that. Imagine if we were to take money from the people that are cheating the system and redirect it toward Maine people and Maine farmers. We're going to return money into the economy and we're going to make sure that our kids go to school with nutrition. Uh, real briefly, you say they're cheating the system. That makes it sound as though they're breaking the law. Are they breaking the law or are they following the law and simply taking advantage of the loopholes that are there? You're absolutely right. That's a great point. That's why I didn't say they were breaking the law. They are cheating the system, well, however, if you're because... The system, if you're following the law, then you're not cheating the system. Technically, but if you are hiding your money in offshore bank accounts, that is still cheating the system. All right. A point to be continued <laughs> at a later time. Diane Russell, thank you so much for coming in. Appreciate your being here. Thanks for having me. We'll be back right after this.